Alright guys, welcome back. This is part 3 of tutorial 5. We're just going to quickly go over the other two scripts that I had wrote earlier today. Um, these are fairly easy scripts, um, and so I just wanted to just go and bring those up here. So, here we've got a censorship script. So, if you um, are a, not a fan of language in your scripts, but you want to offer, or I'm sorry, you are a fan of language in your scripts, as in uh, your your uh, text messages that you display throughout the game, you will probably be using expletives in um, throughout throughout. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you through this, or what I've already done is how to remove those from your text based upon a comparison method. So what we first had to do was we said, all right, well they're always going to be displayed out of the message window. And the battle message window is actually a inherits from window message. So no matter what we put in this thing, it's always going to apply um, down to both the main message, excuse me, and the battle message as well. So that's why we didn't actually have to define you know, any sort of other special class. So what we did is we defined a constant here with an array of strings, and these strings being the different swear words or expletives uh, that you wanted to be removed. Next, we actually go ahead and say, what do you want to replace them with? So if you wanted to use asterisks or dashes or plus signs or dollar signs, you can do whatever you want, or really you could just leave it with nothing and it'll just kind of leave a blank line or underscores or you know whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set it back to just the as well you know I'm going to use the uh, comma now or not comma but uh, dash. So what's going to happen is, is it's going to find these words in any text that message that it's supposed to display and it's going to replace them with this text. And then it's only going to do this if this particular switch is enabled and so we can define what switch that is. So what we had to do is we had to define um, a array of bad words and because we don't know whether or not they're going to be all lowercase or the first letters capitalized or they're all uppercase we don't know. So what I did is I created a method here that will give us all the different variants. So even if you put it up here with a capital F then down here it's gonna this says for each word as in these, what's going to happen is it's going to say take that and turn it into all lowercase as this one already is then it wouldn't do anything and it adds that to this uh, array. And then after that it says alright well let's go ahead and capitalize the first letter as I've done here. And then the last one it's going to change it into all uppercase like that. So it gives you all of these different variants so that if it catches it in any one of these, then it will do it. Now, the only exception to that is, is that I, there, is, there are other methods I could do it, but this was just the fastest one I could do. But if you accidentally did something like that, it's not going to catch it. So you could go up there and you could add all the different variants you want and um, let it do its own thing and um, get those all out for you. But generally speaking, you're going to know what you're typing, and so pr presumably that's not going to be a concern. So we go ahead and we add all of those words into this array, and so that we can go back through that and cycle through those and remove those words. So what we're going to do, uh, or what we do down here, is we say, all right, convert special characters. Now, if we come back and we look at the window message code, we know that the text, or uh, it's actually game message text, it looks for this value in order to find out whether or not a message should be displayed. So when it comes in here, it's looking for an update. It says, let's see, where is it? So if I don't have a message, I need to start a message. So if we look at the start message code, it says read those into a new string called text. So that's how we know what we need to do, uh, what we need to be editing. But after it adds everything into it and it goes in through and it uh, adds in the choices and all of those things, it 
it uh, then comes down here and it gives us or runs this method here called convert special characters. This is where it does the text replacement for color choices or uh, character names or you know things along those lines. So here it's going through all of that data. So rather than going back and trying to redefine how it does that, I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to tag on to this method and we're going to add a little bit more to it. So what we did is we said, all right, well, let's create an alias of that and we'll give it a new name. And then we define the old name of it. So we have to redefine that method. We give it the old name so that it always does what it always did. But then we're also going to run this new method called sensor language. This new one is going to look and see whether or not that switch is equal to true. And if it is, then it's going to cycle through the bad words and it's going to do a general substitution of all of the word that it's supplied with. And it's going to replace it with, and this is the constant, it's going to replace it with, and we're going to multiply that because a string multiplied by a number is actually going to give you that string that number of times that you multiplied it. So in this case it's actually just a dash. So if the word was ass then it would give us a length of three and therefore it would give us three dashes. So let's go ahead and see this in action. Here I've actually prepared a uh, event here and inside of this we have just the do you want me to enable filtering of, not, of the text or not and here's what he tries to say. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and try to process that. So let's go ahead and run it. And when we talk to him, it is going to ask us. I'm going to say, yes, I want you to filter it. And here we got the text that we provided it. And here you can see it replaced the words with the appropriate lengths with the dashes. Okay, and then we can do it again, say no, and there you go, the whole words are visible. Okay, so that is that script, very, very simple, um, straight and to the point. Okay, the next script is actually a tint by variables. So we actually created a couple of different variables uh, up here at the top. These are constants saying what variables we're going to be watching for in order to tint the screen. So we have to be able to identify a red, a green, a blue, and a gray value for the tone when we initialize it in order to set that value. So here we say um, in the map, because the map is the one that actually contains the screen, and you can actually come up here and find that out um, in the initialize here. We got gamescreen.new, and it just stores itself as screen. So if we come back down here to our script and we say, during your update routine, then I want you to update my manual tint and then do your regular update routine. So which means that if it's got a, uh, a tone method already being applied, it's going to follow that method before it follows mine because it applies, uh, it does mine, but then it's actually going to reset it by running um, the other. So. Um, what we are doing here is we're saying if all of these variables are not equal to zero, so these are all the different variables, then it says, all right, well, if that's equal to zero um, and I'm not currently transitioning for another one already, then go ahead and do those, um, set those values for me, and then set the tone of the screen to the color specified. Now we don't define a time range on however on how to do it. This is just due to the bare bones version of the request. He didn't say how he wanted it done, so I just did it bare bones. I'm gonna just straight out switch it. So if one of these variables is not equal to zero, or I'm sorry, if they are this is only if they're not equal to zero. So if they are all equal to zero, then it comes down here to this else case. So then I say, again, if you're not currently in the middle of a transition, then go ahead and return the old screen tone in which you wanted to access. Um, so say, for example, I set the screen tone to hot pink. And then after I did that, I came in here and I configured some sort of manual one. So the manual one would override the other because it's already finished transitioning. But now that um, 
I have uh, reset all my variables for my manual override back to zero, then I, I need to go back to something. And so it chooses to return back to what you had last set as your screen tone um, through, that, through that process. So um, we had to reveal a couple of uh, items of game screen in order to do this. We had to look at the tone target so that we could read out what the last tone setting was and then the tone duration saying that are you currently transitioning from one tone to another so that we didn't cause any problems with the existings. So um, that's the script. Um, here I've got an event I set up. Um, he just asks here, can I reset your screen? And in which case he's going to set a screen tone, which in this case is a hot pink as I had said. And then here we go ahead and set all of the variables to 50. And then we add another 50 to variables 1 and 2. Wait another 6 or 1 second. Add another 75. And then we do 2 and 4. We take away a little bit. Then we add 100 to item number 3. And then after that, we set them all back to 0 so that you can see what happens. And then down here, it just resets them all back to 0. Now there is nothing to actually go back and reset the manual screen tone. So what you're going to see is, is that it's going to obviously stay in the hot pink once everything's done. So we're going to go ahead and talk to that event and just show you how this works. He says, can I set it? You say, sure. Now it does the normal transition. Now there's a manual, 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 one more. And then it resets it to the, the color that it was transitioning to originally. Okay. Since it's already there, it's just going to flop around. And then, of course, it's going to clear it and it's going to go back. Okay, So that is pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or anything, um, just uh, leave me a message down below. And uh, again, subscribe. I'm happy to go through these things. Um, and here I've written three scripts today. so. Um, all of these probably took me probably about an hour total. Um, so anyways, um, give me just whatever, or go ahead and leave me comments, and uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, guys, we'll catch you later. Bye.